In this lesson, we'll be looking at adding tasks to a project. As you can see, I've opened up a project that I've been working on. The project is called the Wedding Planner Project. And you can see here in our task sheet that I have already added a number of tasks to the Wedding Planner Project. So we want to add a new task. There are several ways to add a new task to your task sheet. Now, we're looking at the task sheet view, but of course, this can be done in the Gantt chart view, or it can be done in the task sheet. It can be done in several locations where your tasks are listed. For now, in order to keep it simple and not overwhelm you with so much information on the screen, I've gone to the task sheet so you can see simply the tasks and their detailed information. So let's look at adding a new task. A new task can be added in several ways. The first thing you'll want to do when working with tasks is to ensure you're, you've navigated the ribbon to the task tab. We're there now. So we can insert a task anywhere by deciding where it is we want to insert the task. For example, if we want to put it at the very end, because we're going to add a new task after the wedding day is complete, say we want to send out thank you notes, we can select the row here beneath the last task and choose the insert section task. Now we can choose to insert a task, a recurring task, or a blank row, which we already have a blank row. So let's insert a task. Now what Microsoft Project 2016 has done is given us a new task line, filled it with information that it expects you to change. So new task. We can just start typing right in this field. Send out thank you notes. How long will this take? My guess is it may take two days. One day to write the thank you notes, one day to get them in the mail and send them out. Since we want to do this after the wedding is complete, and let's assume we're going on a honeymoon, and that will take some time, and we'll need to get back, uh, let's say that we schedule it for middle of October 2016. So this is the start we're going to schedule the start for, let's say, October 20th, and two days. Now, you'll notice when I change it to two days, the finish date changed to October 21st. So the start is 1020, the end is October 21st. Predecessors. So a predecessor is what tasks must occur first before this task can occur. So, and you simply enter the line item number here. For example, the wedding complete has a predecessor of 98, which you can't see at the moment. I'll drop this down here. 98 is get ready and enjoy the wedding day. And so the wedding is not complete until after the wedding day actually occurs. Uh, so that's a predecessor for task number 99. So for task number 100, we want the predecessor to be task number 99. And you can add other predecessors. You can claim that other things must be completed as well. You simply add a comma and enter another number for that line item. Now remember, you're entering line items listed here on the left. So this is adding a new task by selecting the insert task option. There are many more tasks hidden underneath here. As you can see, these are summary tasks. The bolded tasks are summary tasks. And if we click their drop-down menus, for example, under the attire, you'll see we have quite a few more tasks under here. At six months plus, in other words, six months before the wedding, there are several things that need to happen. Select an order of wedding gown, choose an order of bridesmaids dresses. At three months prior to the wedding, we've got order dresses for the mothers. There's a new task I've entered in already. And set dates for fittings for bridesmaid, buy a wedding gift for your future spouse, and gift for attendants and helpers. This task was entered in a different way, and I'll show you how to do that now. By selecting a line item, the line item after which you want to insert a task, you can right click and choose Insert Task. You can do it right there. You'll see there are three task options in this menu. There's Insert a Task, Delete a Task, or Inactivate a Task, or Make it Inactive. If we inactivate a task, it will cross that line item out. Okay, so I will undo that because we don't want to cross that line item out. If we right click the row after which we want to add a task and select insert task, a new task will be inserted above that line item. So we chose line 25 and a new task was inserted in line number 24. 
And so what we want to add here is we want to add the tuxedo fitting slash rental. This will take one day. And I would say we don't need a predecessor for that. Doesn't necessarily need anything else to happen first. And I think May 20th is fine. So we can leave this information here. Now we can add more details to our tasks, and this is known as setting the task parameters, other than what you see here out to the right. As you can see, there are more columns out here, but this task sheet is only going to list a few of the common attributes to each task. You can customize this by inserting and adding more, which we discussed in a previous lesson. But for now, if you would like to access the setting task parameters menu, you can simply double click a task like this, and the task information window opens. Just like the project information window, this task information window allows you to add much more detailed information. So for example, is this somewhat completed? If only three out of your four groomsmen have their tuxedos rented, you might want to put that this is 75% complete. You can choose whether or not the duration is estimated. So if we say one day and it's estimated because you're not sure that all four men can get to the shop on the same day, you might want to select estimated. Is this task auto scheduled or is it manually scheduled? And we discussed that earlier. Is it inactive, which we also discussed? Of course, there are your start dates and your finish date, which can be adjusted here if you want to manually schedule. So if you set a start and a finish, you will be manually scheduling this. You can choose whether or not this task displays on the timeline. And also, as we discussed previous, the not all tasks are displayed on the timeline, just those you select to show on the timeline. We can hide the bar or roll it up if we choose to do that. This is just the general tab of the task information window. There are the predecessors tab where you can identify any predecessors. There is the resources tab. If you want to assign specific resources, we might put the tuxedo shop as a resource cost. For us, since we're only paying for the groom's tux, it would just be the cost of the groom. When we go to the advanced tab, you can see we have more information. Is there a specific deadline? Is there a constraint, a constraint day? These things we will get into much more detail in the Microsoft Project 2016 advanced course. So if you want more information on this stuff, check out that course. There's a notes tab if you want to add specific notes that you might want to insert. Say you want to say Brian, John, and Michael have completed their rental, but Andrew is still, we're still waiting for Andrew. There are custom fields as well, so if you want to insert a custom field, you can do that as well. So that's, that's the task information uh, parameters, and as well, it's scheduling manually or automatically. Uh, and again, predecessors are a great tool for when you're having projects schedule your tasks for you automatically. I highly recommend it. Manually scheduling tasks can become burdensome if you have a large number of tasks, such as this list here. By allowing Project to automatically schedule those tasks, you are simply selecting when they start and about how long they will take, and then Project will determine the best time and dates in order to meet your project start date with all your task durations, or if you have a finish date in order to meet that finish date. And that completes this lesson on adding tasks to a project.